I need to create an email service for my system to send out typical emails like order confirmations or maybe when my billing information has changed. I'm Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com, but what does this email service actually do and how do we communicate with it? Well, we have a few different options and one of them is intuitive but might not be obvious. So the first option is using Publish Subscribe, an event-driven architecture, meaning that we have some service that's publishing events like the order was placed event, and then we can have some email service that's consuming that type of event so they can send out the order confirmation. So maybe we have service A, it's the one publishing that event, and then we have this email service that's consuming all these different types of events from all these different types of services, and it can actually be the one sending out the email. That could be with AWS SES, SendGrid, whatever the case may be. But we just have all these different services publishing all their respective events, and we have this email service that's consuming and aware of all these events so it can send out those relevant types of emails. Before I get into more solutions and the trade-offs, I wanna thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. Another solution that really relates to number one in terms of its downsides, which I'll get to, is have a service that responds to commands where you tell it, I need you to send this specific email. That could be done with message queues and messaging, or it could be direct request response via some API. Now I'm keeping this diagram really simple. It could just be service A requesting, saying, hey, send out that email to that email service. Yes, we could have thrown queues and messaging in here, but ultimately you're saying do this, and then the email service is the one contacting, like I said, AWS SES or SendGrid, whatever. Now there's a major downside with both of these approaches. Sure, they have different ways of communicating, but that's not the issue. The issue is what's actually in the contents of the email. So here's an email that I received of when my order was shipped. And I'm gonna point out some of these boxes and how they relate to each other. So this first one says shipment of one item. Then I have my shipment details, so the carrier, the tracking information, who it was shipped to, me. It also again contains the information about who it was shipped to. So that's the shipping information. And then we also have this box here, which is relating to billing information. So my payment type, which I paid by MasterCard, I have billing information here, my bill to address. And then lastly, at the very bottom, this was actually the contents of my order. This means we have to do some type of composition and get data likely from other services or other places to compose this email. This means that we have to do all this composition in our email service. So in reality, let's say we are doing, regardless of whether you're consuming an event or you're consuming a command or you're directly calling it, that means that when you said, hey, I want you to send out this shipping email, well, really that email service needs to fetch information from one service, probably another service, maybe another service to do all that composition so that it actually can even send out that email. Now there is a third option, which I think is intuitive, but might not just be obvious which is the producer is the consumer. And what I mean by that is whether you're using commands and queues or events and publish subscribe, is that the service that actually is producing the event or the command is actually the one consuming it. So in the case of shipping that email that my order was shipped, it's not that we have a separate email service that's responsible for doing that composition. It's actually the boundary that is producing the command or the event, so likely our shipping service. But then to avoid having to call other services to get that data, that means that you either, one, need all the data from other services to be able to compose that email, two, you're fine with reaching out to those other services, or three, you just don't include that information in the email to begin with. And that's an option that seemingly is taken because looking at my inbox and the different types of emails I was receiving, there was a very specific information and not really a composition of things like this. Now there's different reasons for that. Some of it could be privacy, et cetera, but you usually had to go to the link, then actually go to the website, go into your account, et cetera. But it's still very narrow what was in the email, so there wasn't a lot of composition happening. But maybe you do need to do composition. What's the solution? Now, although I'm not in love with it, it's simply using request response and APIs to get that data when you need to compose the email. So because the shipping is responsible for sending that shipping related type of email out and you wanna add some composition because you need billing information or you need some of the sales, the order information, you can do that, compose the email and then use the email service to actually send to what other provider you're using like SES. Another option, which I don't love as well is using event carried state transfer to kind of move data around so that you have a local cache copy 
so that, for example, in the shipping service, when you need to compose that email for when an order was shipped, you have all the data, you don't need to reach out to other services. So that means that when our payment information was, say, processed, we got that billing information, we can publish that event, we can have our shipping service consume it, and then can store that information as a local cache copy. Now I said I don't love both options, but you're gonna be coupled somehow. Whether you wanna lose the temporal aspect and have event carried state transfer, or whether you actually wanna have that temporal aspect and deal with everything needing to be available, depending on how you're communicating with other services, kind of pick your poison there. Preferably, you just don't have to do this composition in an email, but I understand it happens. So this means this third option is you don't have an email service necessarily, because in my example of needing to send out, say, shipping information, is that you already have that within your shipping service, whatever boundary does that. So to add another service that's really just technical capabilities of sending an email that then needs to get that data elsewhere from another service or needs to get it from event carried state transfer or something like that, you already have that data within a particular boundary. Make it the one responsible for composing that email. Now that's not to say an email service wouldn't be something that exists. A service is the authority of a set of business capabilities. So is sending email business capabilities? Sure, but what about the data ownership behind that? What data does the service own? Well, it really doesn't own any of that shipping information, but there is data it can own. And that data is related to emails. If you've done any work related to emails, kind of at volume, you know there's things like reputations and things that you need to maintain so you can actually send emails out. But there are things like email events of deliveries and opens that you might wanna track. Bounces, spam, unsubscribes, all that data is related to you sending out emails that you wanna maintain. And an email service is what would own that data because it's responsible for actually sending out the emails with say something like AWS SES as the example. So an email service can exist, it's just not necessarily where you'd be doing the actual composition of generating the emails. A member of my channel inspired this video by asking this question in our private Discord. If you wanna get access to that private Discord and join my channel, check the links in the description on how to join. But hopefully this video gave you a different idea about maybe where you can post emails, what an email service might actually be, and just different ways of thinking about it. A lot of this kind of, as always, trade-offs and context is king about what your contents of your emails are. Are you doing composition? It, immediately, I think people just get kind of go to the notion of, well, I need a service because I've got to do something very specific when it really probably relates to something else. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.